Chapter 5 Adversarial Search Adversarial search refers to search in competitive environments where the agent's goals are in conflict. We'll look at some examples. And uh, for understanding adversarial search and um, studying the algorithms that are capable of um, searching in such competitive environments, games are good examples. And uh, games are good candidates because um, in, in games, the states are easy to represent, unlike many other real-world problems. Also, in games, uh, um, agents are restricted to a small number of actions, unlike in real world where you can have a lot of options. Also, in games, we have rules, um, precise rules, that define what actions are possible and what are not. And um, despite all of these, games are also usually hard to solve. So, games are really good candidates to understand um, adversarial search um, problems and uh, algorithms that can be used to solve those problems. Here are three games. Here's the um, eight puzzle game, eight puzzle game, and here's our chess game, and then here's our tic-tac-toe. Which of these games are adversarial? When we are playing the eight puzzle game, nobody is disturbing us. In other words, nobody is interfering with our play. Whereas when we are playing chess, say if this is player one, then the other player P2 interferes with your moves. In case of tic-tac-toe, let's say you're playing as player one, then the other player P2 interferes with what you play. So these two games are examples of adversarial search, whereas eight puzzle is not. <clears throat> the process is adversarial search because say you are playing this game of tic-tac-toe, then as let's say the player who places X, you are searching for a solution that gives you three X in a row. So you are doing a search but your search is in an adversarial or in a competitive environment because the other player interferes with your search process. Before we discuss about the algorithms that are applicable for adversarial search, let's first see how we can define a game or a problem formally. Consider a game that only has two players. Players, let's say, max and min. So the convention that we will follow in this chapter is that Max moves first. So this is our player P1 who always moves first and this is our player P2 who moves next. So Max places, let's say for example in the game of tic-tac-toe, X first if we were playing the game of tic-tac-toe and Min follows after that. A game can be formally defined as a search problem with the following elements. S0 is something that, defi that defines our initial state. So in the case of the game of tic-tac-toe, this would be our S0. Player S is a function that takes a state as input and returns whether it's the turn of player P1 or P2. Actions S takes a current state S as input and returns what are the possible moves that are um, that are possible at this state. Results S A is a function that takes current state S as input, takes the action that, uh, that uh, was taken, and uh, this defines the new state, let's say S next, that will be the outcome of being in this state and taking this action. The next element is a terminal test function, and uh, it takes a state as input and returns true or false, which is ba basically um, checking whether the game is over or not. The last element is a utility function that takes current state or any state S as input and player P as input. And what it does is it returns a numeric value for a game that ends in 
the terminal state S for player P. In other words, how good or how bad is this state S, is this terminal state, terminal state S for this player P. This is also known as the objective function or a payoff function. For example, in the case of the game tic-tac-toe, the outcome can be either one player can win, the same player can lose, or there can be a draw. If we represent these values using, let's say, win as 1, minus 1 as loss, and 0 as draw, then a node in which, let's say, if we have the players as min and max, and let's say max places x first, and if the game ends like this with values in other cells, then utility s, utility function that takes this node as input for player max will return 1. However, the same function, if we were to enter min as uh, the input, then this would return minus 1 because for min, this is a loss. The initial state, actions function, and the result function define something known as game tree for a game. So what is a game tree? A game tree is a tree where nodes are game states and the edges are moves. We'll look at an example. As an example, let's look at the game tree for the tic-tac-toe game. At the beginning, we have all cells empty, which is our initial state S0. At this state, Max has nine possible moves. Max can place an X in either of the nine cells. So we have nine possible moves. Since the play alternates between Max placing an X and Min placing an O, Min can after this, say if we look at the first possible state, next state S1, Min can place an O at eight places because there are eight empty cells after this. So then the possible nodes at this level, at level one, we have nine nodes. At level two, the number of nodes is eight times nine. And in level three, the number of possible nodes are seven times eight times nine, the number of nodes we had earlier, and so on. At each leaf node, we have a value that gives us the utility of this state. For convention, what we do is we usually represent these utility values from the perspective of our first player, P1 or max. So these numbers represent a score from the perspective of max. For example, a game that ends in a situation like this is very bad for the player max. So that's why we have a utility score of minus one. A game like this with three axes in a row is a case of winning for max, so we have a score of plus one. And something like this is a draw for max. Usually, when we have utility um, values like these, high values are assumed to be good for max and bad for min. So how many nodes do we have in this game tree? We have nine nodes plus eight times nine, plus seven times eight times nine, and so on. How can we come up with optimal decisions in case of adversarial search? In a normal search problem, what we saw earlier was that an optimal solution is a sequence of actions that lead to the goal state or a goal state. In an adversarial search problem, min, the player P2, or uh, there could be more players, interfere with this, with this sequence of actions. So you cannot directly tell um, actions A1, A2, A3, and so on lead to a solution because your second player min might interfere in between. So a general strategy for the max player will look something like this. Specify the moves in the initial state. That is, you look at all possible actions you can take, A1, A2, A3, A4, and so on. Then observe every possible response by min. In other words, if I took this action, what are the possible actions that um, min can take? let's say b1, b2, b3, and so on. If I choose this action, what are the possible um, actions min will take, and so on. And then, then specify the moves in response by looking at 
if I chose this action, what is going to mean to and looking into all the possible scenarios, choose your best move. And repeat this um, for every time you have a choice to pick an action. This optimal strategy can be determined from something known as a mini max value of each node. In other words, if we had a magic number, a magic number, so we have all of these actions that max can take, and these lead to various states. If there was a way where we could tell this state is better than this state and this state, then max could automatically choose this. So this minimax value is that magic number or a, a magic function that given a node gives you a score that tells you how good that node is. In other words, this number tells you if a state is gold or brass. Say for example, if this was a min's turn, if min was playing the game, then something like this would be gold for min, and um, something like this probably is a brass because this doesn't lead to um, a winning solution. We are now interested in this magic function, minimax value, minimax value. In other words, we know that terminal states have utility values associated with them. Say for example, if this is a terminal state, terminal node, then this terminal node for max has a score of minus one. That means here max already has lost it. This terminal state probably has a plus one because here max has three in a row. So terminal states are easy to check. That is to know whether they are good for, for the player max or not. But the question is, how can we compute the score or rank or, or value uh, or the goodness of these intermediate nodes? That is um, the non-terminal nodes. This is given by the minimax function. How can we calculate minimax value at a given node in a game tree? Let us consider a reduced tic-tac-toe game this is because a full game tree of a, of a tic, full tic-tac-toe game is too big. In this reduced tic-tac-toe game, say the possible moves for max are A1, A2, and A3 as shown in the tree here, the game tree here. So the upper facing triangles represent max's turn, turn and the downward facing triangles represent min's turn. The possible moves for actions, possible moves for max are A1, A2, and A3. These three possible actions. Say if A1, if max decides to take this action A1, then the possible moves for the player min are B1, B2, B3, and so on. The numbers here represent the utilities of the nodes. For example, here this number 3 means that for the player max, if the game ends up being in this state, then the score for max is 3. Obviously, max would want to be at a node like this. Optimal strategy for the player max can be determined using the minimax value at any node. So whether you choose, whether max chooses x and a1, a2, or a3 is determined by the minimax values at the subsequent nodes. Let's say um, here b, c, and d. Because max always wants to move to a node that gives maximum minimax value in this case. Also, the minimax value for a user, this user, which is uh, our standard convention, is the utility of being in that corresponding node. In other words, just the way the utility values at the terminal nodes represent how likely Max is going to win or how far or how good Max has won the game. The minimax value as these intermediate nodes also sort of represent the utility of being in the corresponding state. That is, uh, if, there is if the Max player is at a node that has very high minimax value, that means the chances of winning the game are much higher. So for this reason, Max will always prefer to move to a state of maximum value given choices. 
the minimax value at a node can be calculated using this recursive function minimax s this function takes input a state s and returns a value that tells you how good or how bad that state is from the perspective of the player player max if the input state is a terminal state that is if we find that the input state is a terminal state then this function simply returns the utility of that node now these utility values by convention are the utilities for the player max instead if the player is max that is at the beginning let's say if it is max strong then this and if the state is not a terminal state then the output of minimax function is the maximum of all possible actions after applying minimax to that node in other words here if we went wanted to calculate the minimax value at this node let's say our node a then the minimax value would be maximum of the minimax value at node b at node c and at node d so this would give you the minimax value at node a which will be um, returned as output now whether we calculate maximum or minimum is determined by who plays at that time Let's look at an, at an example problem to understand how we can calculate minima, minimax values. In this practice problem, we would like to calculate the minimax values at nodes A, B, C, and D for the player max given the game tree below. The numbers in the leaf nodes represent the values of the utility. For convenience, let's name these leaf nodes as well so this would be e f g h i j k l m let's start by looking at the first state s naught which is a since max starts playing at this node we would like to calculate the minimax value at this node node a so we look at this equation we check if a is a terminal node or not since a is not a terminal node we don't use this expression we check if the current player is max since this is max stone we'll look at this term in the expression minimax value at node a is the maximum of minimax values at all the nodes that result from various actions you take so this is maximum of all the actions that we can take so the first action we can take is a1 this results to a state b then we calculate the minimax value at the resulting state this means this will be maximum of minimax value at this state b now the next possible action is a2 so that will lead us to node c so then once again this will be minimax value at node c and the third action is a3 so this will be minimax value at node d in other words minimax value at node a is maximum of minimax value at b minimax value at c and minimax value at d since this is a recursive function we will need to call the minimax value function again for each of these three expressions so let's look at the minimax value at node b so what is the minimax value at node b we call this function again and we check if b is a terminal node or not it's not so we don't use this expression we check is the current player max in this case that is not the case this is mean stone so then the expression for minimax for b will be minimum of all possible actions and the minimax values at those nodes so minimax value at b will be minimum of the minimax value 
at all the resulting states. So if we take this x and b1, the resulting node will be e. And minimax value at node f and minimax value at node g. Once again, we have hit a recursion. We need to calculate the minimax value at node e, node f, and node g. The minimum, the minimax value at node e is 31 because we check if e is a terminal state or not. It is, so then we return its utility. So this 31 is returned in place of minimax value of e. So this will be 31. Now we are winding back the recursion. Minimax value at f will be 20 and minimax value at um, g will be 12. So minimum of 31, 20 and 12 is 12. So this returns as uh, 12. That means the minimax value at node b will be 12. Next, we evaluate the minimax value at node C. So the minimax value at node C similarly will be 2. So this will be replaced by 2 and this will be replaced by 1. Now the minimax value at node A will be maximum of all 3 which is 12. And the axon that gives you 12 is the first axon A1 because this is where we got. So the minimax value at node B is 12. Minimax value at node C is 2. And the minimax value at D is 1. And max chooses the maximum of all these three, which is 12. Now there is a difference between the utility function that we've been talking about and the minimax function. The utility function takes a state as input and the current player p as input and defines a numeric value for a game that ends in a terminal state. In other words, utility values are defined only for terminal states. Now the minimax values also take a state as input and the current player p as input or of any player at that time as input and it defines numeric values at all other nodes that is it only works at non-terminal nodes effectively minimax value works at both terminal and non-terminal nodes but at terminal nodes it directly returns the utility of that node so in the expression for our minimax function, we ultimately rely on the utility of some node at the end of the recursion, some node s. But otherwise, minimax value calculates the, the utility at nodes other than the terminal nodes.